It was the 1960s, and the odds seemed insurmountable. On one side of the river was a huge Cumberland landfill. On the Lincoln side was a gravel operation that was digging right next to the historic Blackstone Canal, almost oblivious to the history. And there wasn't anyone to do anything about it except the Canal Group. That's the Committee for the Advancement of Natural Areas in Lincoln. Now, can you imagine in 1965 a housewife climbing up on top of a bulldozer to quiz the operator? Who do you work for and why are you doing this? Henry and, and a couple of other members of the group got into a boat and they took pictures uh, of the area. And uh, then they went in to visit Mr. Ronsi, who lived in Providence and who, who um, uh, owned the land. And they showed him the pictures, showed him how, beautif how beautiful the area was and told him what their idea was of, of saving that area as a park. Uh, he was convinced that it was a worthwhile project and uh, <clears throat> he would not only stop the, the operation that was going on, but he would give us a donation to get started and, and help us with our project. The hard work of the Canal Group can be seen in the creation of the Blackstone River State Park. But the state park today is where the gravel operation was working in the 1960s. And it was on the land that the Ronsi family donated to the state of Rhode Island. What about that horribly smelling landfill in the Cumberland site? That would be a much harder nut to crack. For each day, the operator of the landfill was supposed to cover everything that had been dumped. However, but I guess he didn't do that too well because it was making a, a really a pretty bad stench, and the neighbors uh, were complaining about the odors. There were numerous lawsuits, uh, different environmental groups, the Conservation Commission in Lincoln uh, certainly made the state aware, the DEM aware of what was going on there. I remember we, we went in by foot, uh, we've been chased out, we went in, down the river by canoe to take pictures of what was going on there. Actually one time I rented a, rented a plane and took pictures from the air to show what was going on. Now the canal group was tenacious. They documented all the destruction was taking place, and they tried everything they could to stop the dumping, but they kept running into a brick wall. For years and years, we tried to make, to have that operation ceased, but nothing would happen. No, no matter what legal procedures we followed, we couldn't beat that Marshalkowski's lawyer. And um, uh, he was told to stop the dumping in 1966, and he would stop it for a little while, and then he'd go back in again. And um, then he was told in 1969 to stop, and he stopped, and then later on he'd go back again. And, um, and then we wanted the town to find out about the uh, pollution of the water. Was that influencing the, the drinking water and like that? for the town of Lincoln and the town of Cumberland. We had three or four hearings, probably about a month apart, and uh, they were in at the State House. And as the Canal Group, we went in to uh, uh, give witness as to what was happening out here. Finally, before the Department of Natural Resources declared that the, the, the dumping should be ceased. Um, and then we thought the case was at the end because the, natural, the Department of Natural Resources uh, had told them to stop. But then the judge ruled that um, the Department of Natural Resources did not have authority to uh, make the, them stop the dumping. Remember, this was a time before environmental rules and before environmental regulations. It was a time before people really cared about the world they lived in. We organized a campaign and we had so many people telephoning uh, certain names that w we would give them and um, to, to have each person write to their congressmen uh, or their senators and asked that the wetlands bill be passed, and that was in 1971. 
All this time, since 1965, we had been struggling with, with what to do to stop the dumping out there. And finally, victory. For were the courts ruling that the Wetlands Act was constitutional, this would allow the Committee for the Advancement of Natural Areas in Lincoln to focus their attention on what was really important, the river.